Um, my name is Puya Wushman. I'm a PhD student at Sky 11. I'm going to present this work I did with my colleague Jason Song and under, under the supervision of my professor, Marian Verels at Sky 11. So the work is about benchmarking and modeling uh, of uh, analog and digital memory computing uh, architecture specifically for deep neural networks. Um, okay. So I will first start with a quick background overview of what we mean and what we, how we describe deep neural networks. And I will then go through a bit uh, into the descrip description of uh, sort of the art accelerators, hardware accelerators for, for neural networks. And also how immunal computing plays a role into accelerating these kind of workloads. I will then go a bit into the details of our cost model for energy modeling of these kind of architectures. And then we'll finish off with a couple of case studies on, um, on how these two, these immunal computer accelerators um, perform in terms of energy, energy efficiency uh, on, different, on different workloads. So, um, deep neural networks are probably the most popular, as we have seen in the previous uh, presentation as well, algorithm for machine learning. Um, they consist in a sequence of layers. Each layer receives as an input an input tensor, which is then convolved with a weight tensor to generate an output tensor. Um, this whole convolution operation can be represented with uh, seven nested loops. Um, and they're enough for representing essentially any kind of layer we can encounter within this, uh, within this type of, within, this, within these models, which can be depth-wise layers, point-wise layers, or 2D convolutions, or even fully connected layers. Um, we also take as a, as, a, as a target workload the benchmark, the benchmark models from TinyML Perf, which they all represent, which they all contain this kind of, this kind of layers. And they're a very suitable starting point for our evaluations. Um, now, um, the common template for accelerating uh, uh, neural network workloads on hardware consists in a 2D array of processing elements in which we specially enroll uh, those loops we mentioned in the previous slides. Um, they consist in a 2D array of processing elements. Each processing element contains a MAC unit and is surrounded by some register to maximize the uh, special locality of the, of the operands. Um, these type of architectures uh, allow for maximum flexibility in terms of how we can schedule the operations, how we, how we distribute the data, how we send the operands across the PRA. It's very much up to the designer to choose if you want to multicast, unicast, or broadcast the operands in the, in the array. Um, however, this, this type of architecture is not very energy, energy efficient, and we also achieve fairly low computational density. Um, another, also another cost is the fact that we have to very often go back and forth in memory hierarchy to fetch data or to store back the, the partial sums. Um, on the total end of the spectrum, in terms of uh, hardware accelerators for memory for neural networks, we have analog memory computing based accelerators. Now, in these type of accelerators, the computation happens in the analog domain. So we have uh, at memory cell level. So we have an input vector, which is, which is uh, uh, sent through the word lines. And uh, the value on this word lines is then combined on what is stored in each of the cells. And the result of this combination is accumulated across the bit lines and converted back to digital domain by means of some ADCs at the bottom of the, of the, of the array. Um, thanks to this uh, type of computation, we can achieve extremely high energy efficiencies and extremely high parallelism as well. But um, this is only achieved if we can fully utilize the array. Um, only by doing so, we can amortize the cost of the peripherals, which, which consists in the DAC or ADCs. Otherwise, um, they, become, they become quite a, quite a contribution which, which cannot be neglected, neglected. Another drawback of AMC is the fact that, given its very rigid structure, we are very limited in the type of data flow, data flow that we can implement. Um, we cannot do any kind of, uh, we, we cannot implement any kind of data flow that we could do for, with, for example, the digital accelerators. But we are limited uh, in, in terms of uh, in terms of uh, the scheduling space. We can only map output channels on the columns, and we can only provide in parallel input channels and the FX and FY dimensions. Um, so in the middle, uh, in between purely digital PE-based accelerators and analog memory computing-based accelerators, we have DMC-based ones. So with DMC-based ones, we have at, at cell level, we also have a logic gate to implement the multiplication operation and another tree to implement the accumulation operation. Um, we still suffer from the same data flow limitations that we have with, uh, with AMC. However, in this case, we have less uh, contribution from the overhead. The overhead is just the other tree that has to accumulate the, the partial sums. Um, um, 
as I said, it's, it is a sort of a way in between AMC and DMC. It's less efficient than AMC, but it provides a little bit of flexibility in terms of uh, we, can, we can do multiple macros, smaller macros placed next to each other uh, to, to allow for higher utilization of the, of the array. Mm. Now, given these premises, uh, the question is which IMC topology and which kind of array dimensions best suit the tiny perf benchmark workloads. Um, so in order to do that, uh, firstly, we try to see what is the current landscape in terms of these kind of accelerators. Uh, we have collected a few papers from literature, um, both for AMC and DMC, mm -hmm. from recent uh, conferences, from recent major conferences. And we see that AMC uh, basically outperforms by at least an order of magnitude DMC, uh, both in terms of energy efficiency and computational density. However, we have to take into account that more often, most often, uh, the values reported in the papers uh, only correspond to peak performances. So they assume that the array is fully utilized at all times and every cell is being utilized and all the costs, all the contribution of ADC and DAX are very nicely amortized. But this is something that uh, doesn't really happen in, uh, with real workloads. And with real workloads, what we see is that uh, we cannot fully map the whole array all the time and we incur in heavy on the utilization in, uh, in a lot of cases, in a lot of cases, um, especially considering uh, these kind of very small networks. Um, so now the question again becomes, which IMC design parameters we can choose? We have to choose which kind of IMC topology we have to, we have to adopt uh, for tiny perf workloads. Now, um, to, to help us in this search, we have to come up with a cost model, with an energy model, to estimate energy consumption of different designs. Um, and now, and this cost model consists essentially in three main components. Uh, the first one uh, is the one related to the cost of multiplying the inputs with the weights in, within the array. The second component is the cost of accumulating the, the partial sums. And the third one is uh, the cost derived from the peripherals, uh, which, um, which are essentially only for a DAC in the AMC case. Um, the first contribution, we split it into two main components. Um, from the energy that comes from the cells and the energy that comes from the logic. The energy that comes from the cells is due to the charging and discharging of the capacitances at cell level, and this is something that we see both on word lines and bit lines, and we multiply that uh, with the number of precharging cycles that are, that are required for running the computation. To do, to do this, we have to add, uh, in the DMC case, we have to add also the logic, so the logic cost. The logic cost is only the one, is the cost of charging and discharging the um, the gate that is required for the multiplication at, at pixel level. And obviously you have to multiply this cost by the total MAC operations required to run, uh, to run the workload. Um, secondly, we have the cost for the accumulation. Um, this cost again can be split into two main components. The first one is the cost that comes from the ADC conversion, and the third one, that, uh, the cost that comes from the other three um, um, addition, accumulation. Now, ADC cost, uh, we have taken, uh, uh, to, to estimate the cost, we have taken uh, inspiration from the, uh, from the ADC survey by Professor Merman. And this cost essentially covers the best case scenario in which me, we, in which the ADC, the person that has, denied the, that has designed the ADC has decided to um, optimize for energy efficiency. Um, the other three cost comes from the um, overall cost of all the full others that are involved in the other three. Uh, multiplied by the uh, charging and discharging of the capacitances per gate in these full others, times the number of accumulations, of course. Um, and the final cost is the cost from the DACs, so the cost for converting from digital to analog domain only for the, M for the AMC case. Um, unfortunately, there, was, there is no uh, uh, highly referenced or cited work in literature, so we had to come up with our own model to sort of minimize the mismatch between, the, between what was the output of our model and the, the, what was reported in the papers. Um, we have further uh, proceeded with the validation task of, of validating our cost model, both for AMC and the AMC. Uh, for the AMC case, we see that we can achieve fairly good accuracy, so we're always within the 20% from what is reported on the paper and what we achieve what we see from, from, from the output of our cost model. However, I must say that um, we had to adjust in a few cases for the ADC cost, particularly considering the fact that also the ADC, um, it vary, the cost of ADC varies very much depending case by case and depending also on the skills of the designer and also on the, on the target uh, that, that, uh, that, is, that is to be achieved 
so, so may not be energy efficiency all the times. Um, for DMC case instead, uh, we can achieve fairly good accuracy in all cases without um, the model um, achieve um, good accuracy in most, ca in most cases, except for the fact, except for those cases in which we are, we are working very low frequency. Um, in those cases specifically, um, what we have is that leakage dominates the energy consumption, and therefore, um, which it, it, and it is, this contribution is not included in our, in our model, and therefore we are not able to uh, accurately represent it. Um, now, uh, given this cost model, uh, we have plugged it in into our in-house uh, framework for design space exploration for linear accelerators. Um, we have taken as workloads uh, the workloads from the tiny perf benchmark, um, and we have taken as hardware architectures four cases that uh, encompass most of the design possibilities. Uh, such, and these four cases are uh, two for AMC and two for DMC. For AMC case, we have one in which we take only one single AMC array, a very large uh, AMC array with thousands of rows and hundreds of columns. Um, in the second AMC case, we, ch we choose much smaller array sizes, um, but uh, that are divided onto, on multiple macros. Um, for the first DMC case, uh, similarly to for AMC case, we do uh, we select a very large array size, and uh, we have on the other side also a DMC case with smaller array size but numerous macros. Uh, to eliminate all the contributions for different technology nodes or for different voltage supplies or for different operand precisions, we took designs that share the same, more or less the same, the same properties. So they are all in 22 or 28 nanometer technology nodes, and they all operate, they all operate in 0.8 volt with 4 bit, 4 bit activation weight precision. Um, now, the results of our, of our estimations for the selected workloads show that if we, if we take, uh, for example, resonant type of uh, resonant or autoencoder, Type of networks in which we can, in which we have to do accumulation across uh, multiple channels and the three by three filters. Um, having an AMC uh, array with large amount of, uh, with a numerous amount of, uh, of, of word lines, really helps in achieving high energy efficiencies. Um, this does not hold for um, those kind of workloads which exhibit point-wise layers or depth-wise layers. Uh, in those cases, uh, what we see is that. Uh, for AMC or for very large array cases, there is a um, high underutilization of the array. And therefore, the cost, um, the energy efficiency is very low and we cannot achieve peak performances. Um, on the, in, instead, if we take smaller arrays and we try to spatially uh, map on multiple macros, what we obtain is a better, is, a, is an improved energy efficiency and, um, and it's a preferred choice in the case of DSCNN or mobile net type of, uh, type of networks. Um, yeah, to conclude, uh, we provide in this, uh, in this work a unified analytical energy model for in-memory computing designs. Um, the code is available um, online uh, as a GitHub repository. It's a fork of the main, uh, of the main, uh, main uh, design space exploration framework, but it will be, it will be merged soon. Um, we then go uh, into evaluating a few cases, case studies on some design architecture from the set of the art. And uh, we have to still do a, a work, extra work on, on evaluating, not only considering the IMC macro contribution, but also considering the whole memory hierarchy around it that uh, might impact heavily the, the performances. Um, thank you um, for your attention. <laughs>